my part, this is our episode number 31 and the first for the new year. I'm Nina and I'm here with Bob and Peggy. We are going to give you three tips in 10 minutes. Something you are going to love doing by yourself. And starting with me, um, there are no more simple sites with Google business profile verified locations. It is going away. This feature is going away from 1st of March. Google has emailed everyone with verified profiles. And this is a massive change for the locations. It doesn't change what users see. They still see the same information, working hours, um, updated information about the business, for example, menus or courses. They can navigate, leave reviews, everything as before. But the business owners cannot uh, link their future clients, institutions, um, apply for programs with a single URL address where all the information is on one place. Everything from the working hours to about me introductions. My tip is to not leave this empty. So look for um, alternatives. There are paid opportunities with a Google workspace. For example, if you don't wish to verify a domain of your own, you can subscribe to Google individual for work. It will come with a Google Sites and you can uh, map it to your domain. For free features, you can still use Google Sites with your free Gmail account. But since Google is changing um, too much, <laughs> and unexpectedly their features, um, I suggest you look for Wix, for example, for some different um, solutions with domains and uh, free solutions. Um, so that's my tip. Uh, check the links below for making steps and having your own domain with your own site link to your Google um, business and don't don't link to Facebook don't think that Google uh, business <laughs> profile link to Facebook pages is all that you need to do that is not true because uh, Facebook is still not your own domain and they can change anytime the terms and you will be still missing this opportunity to have your own website and with this to peggy thank you nina i think that's a really tough situation for business owners who are using that feature because like you say there isn't an easy solution and that kind of segues into what i wanted to mention this week where youtube now allows someone who has an audio only podcast to import the rss feed for that podcast to have it show on youtube and youtube music and this seems like it's useful. It seems pretty straightforward as a feature and podcasters can do that. But what it really points out is how useful it is that podcasts really use an open standard so that you can record your podcast, create this RSS feed, and then basically import it to almost any podcast listening platform so you have a standard format feed and all these other sites like youtube and youtube music can read the feed that makes it much more flexible than if you create your podcast on a closed platform if you create your podcast with a playing list on youtube you can't import it anywhere else so i think that this is something that in general is really useful for creators and for business owners to keep in mind that a lot of times the best solution is going to be something that makes your content transportable to a different platform if you need to do that. 
Go on. That is absolutely important. Interoperability on applications and most of all when creating pieces of content to have them uh, embedded on and move them migrate and anything it's uh, the such a dynamic situation mm -hmm. on the internet and bob what is your tip this week oh man i'm full of it this uh, today i've got three tips <laughs> 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 two have to do with google and then the third one has to do with ai so uh, uh let's start with google first a uh remember when you create a google doc on your google drive that uh and you want to share that I um, mean, you, you should try to make sure that the people you're sharing with actually have an account with Google, because if they don't, they won't be able to open it. And then you will have to and uh, either share to everybody, which isn't safe. You don't want to actually do that. Or you would have to make a, a rich text document or a PDF or a Word document. And that means there would be two copies instead of one. And that's going to kind of muck up the work. So again, uh, check with the people you're going to share and make sure that they have a Google account. That doesn't mean they have to have Gmail or anything. They just have to have the account. Okay. Uh, the second Google uh, feature is uh, you got a smartphone. Uh, you might want to have some fun and turn on and Google Maps, turn on the timeline. Because I just got a summary. Uh, Google tracked my movements over 2023. And I discovered that I had walked 293 miles. Wow. <laughs> over, over 114 hours. So <laughs> it's really pretty cool. In fact, I traveled 40% of the, uh, the the distance around the equator of the earth this year. So wow. hopefully, hopefully I didn't introduce too many carbons into the atmosphere doing so. <laughs> and the, the, <laughs> the third thing is really cool. You know, I'm in the wildlife watching. Well, a uh, company in, from Austria called Swarovski, I think I got the pronunciation right. They also make crystal, but they also are into optics big time. They spent the last five years creating a pair of binoculars that incorporates, get this, AI. That's right. It can identify 9,000 species of birds. If you stick it up to your face and then you uh, focus on a bird, a little red circle forms around it. The It has, get this, it has Android operating system embedded in it. It talks to the web. It, it will come down and it will tell you what you are looking at. And, 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 and <laughs> the features don't stop there. You can take a still picture of it or video of it. It has like a 20 gigabytes of storage um, it can do three types of uh, formats, uh, 1080p, 720, and 480. Uh, it's a 10-powered binocular. Um, they, they traditionally uh, uh, really create one of the top uh, pairs of binoculars in quality. Um, so uh, although this might be a little bit of a step down because of uh, the the features that are mentioned. We don't know exactly what the sensor size is on this, but if you go to their website, um, you you will get all the, the pertinent information. Uh, I think the major downer is that it's going to be really spendy right now. Uh, it's going to be $4,800. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> so, That's more expensive than a book. <laughs> plus, plus, you'll have to buy batteries. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah thank you thank you for anyway, these yeah. uh, tips bob uh i myself received also google maps summary for last year i traveled half of the world which is also <laughs> astonishing i didn't know i traveled so much um so thank you to everyone who watched us and listened to us our next episode uh, 32 is on 28th of uh, january click notify me so also add comments under the video you will answer your comments and questions and thank you again for being here see you next time thank you <laughs>